post it in chat. True or false, God can speak through people. I'm sorry. God can speak to people through life lessons, whether they know him or not. And who uh, submitted the question so they can go last? Was it? I believe that was uh, Heather. Write that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trust them now. Uh, you get to go last. Okay. Um, anybody want to go I'll first? I'll go first since I'm going to be real brief. All right. Go ahead. I'm going to say true. Now, I got saved as a child, so I, you know, my my life experience was like, blip, and now, <laughs> and I got saved. So I didn't have a lot of experience with, with that, but I did have some, but not a whole lot. Um, but when I read the scripture, I could see what, as a child, just thinking as a child, when I saw what Jesus was able to do in the scripture and the miracles and I knew I couldn't do that. And I knew my parents or no, nobody that I knew could do that. I saw that he was God. But that was, you know, the just of my life experience at the time. But after hearing Sister Angel's testimony, and if you haven't heard it, her, she has a beautiful testimony about how she was led through the Lord based on her life experiences and the different things that she was examining in her experiences and I get so excited when I hear that to hear somebody that was an atheist that would make arguments against God and why he couldn't be. And yet the Lord led her to himself and revealed himself to her it is such a beautiful testimony. So I'd actually have to say on that um, based on just not only Sister Angel, but other people I've heard, but especially Sister Angel, because I have a relationship with her and I have felt the spirit of the Lord when that woman is talking, and I know that my sister is born again. So, <laughs> I mean, to be led to the light of Christ from, you know, a, a position of I don't believe and I'm not going to believe and I'm mad at you, God, <laughs> you know, e even though I say I don't believe, but I'm mad at you, too, which is funny because how are you going to be mad at something that doesn't exist? But anyway, uh, and, and I've seen different people come to the knowledge of the truth on that. And when I hear her testimony, I get so excited about it. I never get tired of hearing it. It was such a beautiful testimony and how the Lord led her to himself. And so I have to say absolutely 100% true that uh, people, even when they're unbelievers, life experience uh, can, can reveal the Lord to them. If they're paying attention, if they won't deny him, if they'll self-reflect and then repent, which has changed their mind, yes, they can come to faith in Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Um, Angel had to step away. So Ben, would you go next? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, th I believe that, uh, I feel that all of my life, God was showing me things. Um, and I think it's even scriptural for, for example, in John six, uh, verse 45, he, Jesus said, it is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from my Father comes to me. So God has to teach you th to some things to even show you that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, and I think uh, God does show all people those things. Uh, but some people, again, uh, I think as Lisa said, they su suppress the truth and unrighteousness. But if you are not one who does that, um, all, all life experiences, all of life, all of creation... Everything that, yeah, everything are everything that is, uh, it points to Christ. Um, and so, uh, I, I absolutely I believe that God will will teach people. Um, even even through I don't have any great examples, but I've heard great examples from other people. I'm sure some of you guys will bring it up. Even I know Renee has some great examples of 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 using error to teach people or using false doctrine to teach people. Uh, in fact, I actually I think part of the reason I got caught in false doctrine is. is, is for God to show, for example, when I first became really certain, serious to, to, to uh, seek God, um, again, he, he, he was drawing me, but at first, um, it, it didn't last long. I wasn't deceived for long, and I, I actually didn't even accept it, but it, it caused me great distress because I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't def I couldn't uh, argue against it, was I got you know got caught up in the Ray Comfort uh, crap, uh, Lordship, and um, I think God led me through that to show me that that it was utterly hopeless 
uh, and it, I, it, I felt like, you know, I, it almost killed me, literally almost killed me. Um, for like two years, I, I lost a ton of weight. I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't think. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And God showed me that it was death, that, that, that teaching, that false doctrine was death. Absolutely. And so, uh, that caused me to pursue grace and see grace all the more. Uh, and now that's what I kind of devoted my life to is just mining the grace out of God's word and plundering grace from God's word. And I think I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, and, it, and I never get sick of it. And it's, 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 I, I, for, I foresee that I would do that for the rest of my life. And uh, again, trying to find the grace uh, and, and taking the sting out of God's word that Lord shippers uh, try to, um, you know, they, the, the Lord shippers put as stumbling blocks to uh, new believers or people who are coming to the faith. Um, so absolutely, I do believe God can, God uses things even when you're not an unbeliever to bring you to Him because we're all we all start to start off as unbelievers. <laughs> we all start off that way. So for us to become believers, I believe we have to be taught by God uh, to see to see Christ, and that's what the law was essentially. It was our guide our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, to me, uh, the answer is clear in the scriptures. Uh, uh, not exactly the way the question is uh, through life lessons, uh, but uh, God does speak to, to everybody uh, because the script, scripture says that um, the, the spirit convicts the world of sin. So uh, God is, uh, at least we know that God is, is convicting everybody of their sins so that they understand they're, they're the problem. They, they got a problem, with, they're estranged be, with God. The other thing is uh, God is, uh, we're promised that uh, Christ has, just as the serpent was lifted up in the desert, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And, and uh, in, in that manner, I will draw all men to myself. So Jesus promised that he would draw all men. So God is communicating with everybody, attempting to get their attention uh, and bring them to him and salvation. So uh, as far as life lessons, uh, why, why wouldn't uh, God also use some kind of life lessons to uh, get through to people too? Um, Angel, are you back? Okay. Yeah. All right. Basically. Yeah. There could go. It's, okay. Yeah, so. okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. I had just had a, a total freak out with the baby. She's she's sick, so I was getting her uh, getting her something to eat. She's getting her, her dinner earlier. So, but um, yeah. If you want Heather to go first, then I can go. I feel bad going last again because that's like, but, um, I can do it. Uh, so right uh, whatever you like, uh, you can go now, or do you insist on the last word again? I don't insist. I don't insist. I will just say, I'll just say true. Absolutely. And what I heard what Lisa said, I couldn't respond at the time, but I, I want to say, Lisa, that meant so much to me. You don't even know how much that means to me. Um, and um, yeah, I would say I have to say true, because if, if it weren't true, I would not be here. I'm going to tell you that. I think that the only, you know, the difference is that, um, you know, I, I don't know if life experiences can teach someone to actually be honest with themselves. That's the only thing, because that's the thing. Your life experiences can lead you to God if you're honest with yourself. If you are not withholding the truth and unrighteousness, um, if you're not uh, uh, will willing to willfully deny the truth, because that was the point that I had to come to. I had to, I come to the point where, um, for me to go on in unbelief, I would have to to basically make a decision to lie to myself. Um, and I think some people make that decision. I really do. Um, uh, I think a lot of people do, uh, but uh, I think that for the rest of us, uh, I think that's probably how God brings uh, a whole lot of of you know people into into the fold into the kingdom because um, some people I I always say that uh, He leads everyone to water. He doesn't make you drink, but some people have to be led like over, like through like what's it like over the river and through the woods and around a few mountains, <laughs> uh, maybe a few times uh, to get to that water. Other people just need to be led right, right across the street, right? It all depends on the person. 
And God knows that point. I believe God knows that point in every person where no further life experience will change because they have they have made that decision to deny the truth whatsoever. I don't believe he gives up on them at that point, but I think that there is a point where people decide if that's kind of what hardening your heart is. I think that's what it is to harden your heart. And if you don't have a hard heart, um, and you know, and even if you do, even if you do, I'm sure that, um, um, you know, God knows, I think yes, uh, foreknowledge. So I believe he knows in advance really what it's going to take for somebody, but, um, I wish that I had been somebody that uh, had not been so uh, hard headed as a child. Um, may, it would have made my life a lot easier, but at the same time, I wouldn't really change it if he gave me the opportunity because um, the, 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 the way that I was led to, to him uh, has equipped me to really um, be able to, to talk to the tougher cases of the people that are, were kind of like me um, that were really tough selves because I kind of had to, there were so many mental blocks that I had to overcome and I, he had to just kind of undo without me even realizing that's what was going on in order for me to get here. And um, I'm so thankful for that today that God uh, gave me that ability because um, I don't know how to reach a lot of people that have grown up in the church and really just have a wrong gospel, but it's, it's very easy for me to talk to people that that are just rejecting the Bible outright and think they're too smart for, um, for the Bible. Um, uh, it's, it's more difficult for me to reach people that somehow are just denying grace. Cause I don't come from that perspective. It's like the exact opposite for me. Um, I came from a family that they, they had the true gospel and they, they embraced it wholeheartedly. And uh, so when I was rejecting the gospel, that was the gospel I rejected, but I, didn't, you know, it's a little bit more foreign for me to, to deal with people that, um, that have no problem believing scripture, but have a hard time believing, uh, that Christ really did pay their sin debt, right? So um, they, they confuse me. But uh, the people that uh, are just like I was, um, uh, I, you know, I have a heart for them because uh, I know at least those who are not truly consciously, you know, they haven't come to that point. I remember that point in my life. I remember that point it was basically when I saw a demon flee the name of Jesus. That um, that I really had two choices it was like a fork in the road and I know I knew like the one the one I didn't choose where I just tell myself whatever it took to preserve my pride and my ego uh, in that moment uh and just you know shrug it off uh and like that doesn't mean anything that doesn't prove me wrong um and it's amazing to me that I, I do think people take that road and choose that road but um uh but for everybody else that you know they really are just the, you know, to they're the victim of their own. Um, they think they're too smart for everything, right? And but they really, they haven't had that moment of humility. But if they did have that moment, uh, it would, it would, it would, it would, it would work. It would stick. You know, those people. I believe that that life experience is the only thing that'll reach them. I had to get out of my own way. God had to kind of move me out of my own way, and that's what He did. Um, and it was, uh, man, it was amazing. And he was, he just showed me when he did that, what an incredible God he is, how, how much he loves us and how much he gets it. God gets it, man. He just really gets it. And that is what, how, how you really build a, a strong bond with him. It's how he walks you in a, per, in a very personalized way, how he walks you through everything to where you realize just how much he gets it and understands you. you even if you think you're real complex you know god god understands every in and out right so uh but i'll just uh leave it at true because my baby's starting to freak out again so <laughs> i'll let heather go yeah i actually just saw steve. Uh, heather before steve you pop go, in. hey steve heather yeah let's acknowledge steve i see steve is here so steve have you been uh listening do you know what the question is I do not. Okay. I heard a little bit of what Angel was talking about. All right. Well, I'll give you the question and you can say hi to everybody. And uh, let me see. The question is um, uh, true or false. God can speak to people through life lessons, whether they know him or not. Okay. Uh, so, but before you answer the question, if you have to want to 
say hello to everybody. Happy New Year, Steve. Happy New Year. Happy belated Christmas. And hi to everybody. <laughs> um, it's good to be here. Uh, the question, can God speak to people through life lessons? I would say yes. Um, I would think that God uses many ways to speak to people who aren't believers. Um, and I think that's the, that's, I mean, that's the Holy Spirit doing what he, what Jesus and the scripture said he would do, that he convicts the world of sin because they don't believe. And, uh, you know, that, that verse there in John, I can't remember the the rest of it off the top of my head, but, uh, the righteous, because we do believe and of judgment because the, the devil has been judged. So, I mean, how does he do that specifically? I think he works in different ways with different people because he knows each one and he tries to reach each one, you know, uh, as he knows best to do. So, um, yeah, I, I now understand angels, the, the, the part of what angel was saying very well. Um, you know, that for me, I did grow up in a, Christian family and in church and all that. So, you know, I, I don't, I can't relate to, to what she's saying. So, um, and I think God uses each individual person, uh, and their story, um, whether they're a believer or not to, to reach as many as he can. Um, there's all kinds of things that, that can lead, that God can use to lead people to the truth. Because uh, as I heard it, once heard it pointed out this way, and it's true. Um, in order to have a lie, you have to have the truth first. You can't make a lie without having a truth for it to be twisted. So, uh, with that in mind, can God show the truth to a person that has believed a lie? Sure. He, you know, um, I think one of the greatest examples of a life lesson that, that to me, I've heard people talk about that used to not believe and came to believe is having a child is giving birth, you know, it's not, not just the giving birth part, but like parents that, you know, go from not having a child and to having a child begin to understand what it's like to be a parent and to have children and to have them not do what you tell them to do and to have them not do things you want them to do. Um, so that's one definite life lesson I think that uh, can just be one example of how God can show himself to people and for people to maybe give the fact that God is real a second thought um, and why God does things the way he does. So... You know, but yeah, thank you. Uh, Brother Luke, you're <laughs> muted. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Usually Ben has to remind me, but now that you're here, I can get it from both of you. <laughs> Heather just wrote you a message. Brother Steve, I just wanted to let you know you have been missed and covered in prayer. Uh, it was nice. Okay. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, 
and we'll, you'll have a chance for a follow-up answer here once we get Heather uh, Heather's answer. Okay, Heather, you've heard everybody's answer. Tell us the truth now. Well, you guys answered it very well. Um, I, I, I would say absolutely true that God can speak to anyone. Um, and through life lessons, absolutely. Um, who are the ones who need a doctor? The ones who are sick, right? The broken, the lost, the, the, the hurting. Those are the people that God speaks to. And how did they get that way? Through life experiences, things in their lives have messed them up or made a mess in their life. And I've seen it so many times in my own life, even where you come to the absolute end and there is no place to go but up because you've, you've gotten to the very bottom of the pit, whether the pit is alcohol or drugs or or um false doctrine or whatever it is you get to the bottom of it and you're and you get to your knees and you say now what and who are you talking to when you say now what if you don't believe in god you're just saying it and then those are the moments when god speaks to you and somehow convinces you to to trust him even if it's just for a second to pull you up or to say a prayer or or to to put your trust in him finally after he's been trying for so long to get your attention um i love the verse in romans 1 um it's verse 20 it says for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that he made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without it, ex without excuse, just creation itself testifies of God. And, and when there's those moments when you're on your knees and there's no place to go, but up, those are the moments that God gets your attention, whether it's through a bird or a person or a flower or something. There's something that God uses to speak to you. And I just think that's a wonderful and a beautiful thing that God loves us that much, that even before we love him, he loved us. Okay, amen. Thank you, sister. Uh, I know uh, Steve mentioned um, uh, when a person has a child, that could be a moment uh, where it's such an event in their life that it, it uh, God will communicate with them through that. Uh, Heather mentioned creation. Um, one other thing I would add to that is uh, tragedy. In, in my case, it was the death of my mother. Nobody in my family had died. I was 36 years old and never experienced the loss of a loved one. And it was such a um, uh, an experience that it, it forced me to seek God and then say, I need some answers. I need to know uh, what is the purpose of life and what happens after we die and what religion is true. And I, I had all these questions that, that I needed. I knew now it's urgent. I need to get answers now. <clears throat> so, yeah, those are uh, life experiences where uh, th this is true. Uh, okay. Anybody want to add more and a follow-up uh, answer now that we're, everybody's had a turn? Mm -hmm. 